So added to what I was just saying, I also have these. I bought them used. Um, they were powder coated, not very well, but I'm not going to complain to the guy I bought them from. I can see paint coming off. This is the front plate that I had on the bus that we were running before. You can see it was hacked or chopped up by a previous owner and it's a little bit crunchy. It's not horrible. It's cleaner on one side than the other. And you can see some of the holes are broken. And I was just test fitting and this piece won't let the heater box in. I have to move this new CB Performance um, sled tin, I think they call them. I have to move it down and then fit the heater box here. So yeah, that's why I didn't paint everything and make it all final because I don't even know if it fits. So I will keep massaging everything, making it fit and then run the engine for a year and if it runs well next winter or whatever i can take everything back off and um, have it media blasted and powder coated but i will probably have to buy at least some of these tins so i don't want to waste time and money doing that for example these big ones are horrible i don't think these are supposed to go here I, I was moving this one down to fit where it's supposed to, like that. And then there's no way to get this little corner to fit behind the, the step of the cylinder head where it's supposed to. So I probably should cut or bend this one. It's bent already a little bit. Somebody bent this to make it fit. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. and. Once I know this all works and all goes together, I can make it pretty. For now, I just want to make it functional. I'm back to the same piece of tin I showed before. And this is a perfect example of why I'm doing this test fit before finalizing everything. It was very hard to get these gaskets in, and now it's impossible to get the actual muffler in. I had to bend this much with the needle nose pliers and it still won't fit. I don't know if you can see, but there's a tiny bit of an elbow there that I need to finish bending. Or maybe I'll tap it from this side with a flat head. And I have more of these gaskets, so I don't care if I break it, but I'm using it to protect the actual seating surface of the, the cylinder head. And I had more issues. Not that I'm complaining, but this is part of a learning experience. These mounting tabs from the heater boxes were shipped to me bent up like this. So obviously I had to bend them back the way they go because they mount onto these uh, tins down here. But you can see the powder coating is coming off from where I bent it back. Look at that. So. Why would somebody powder coat this before selling it if it's not going to work? Um, anyway, that's just one piece of advice before, you know, when you're in the checking stage, make sure these things are correct. Um, now it's too late for me to say anything. So I guess whenever I paint everything else, I'll paint these tabs on their own and it's been very very hard to get all the tin to fit I'm I'm struggling a lot with it and I guess it's a complicated part of the process that I was not expecting now that I have the muffler in I'm still holding it with my arm with my hand but you can see what I was talking about on both sides it will bite into the main tin. Even the one I destroyed is still touching, but now what I will do is put a flat head in there and pry against the muffler itself, not the cylinder head, and push in at the same time. 
Unfortunately, I don't think I can record this, but you get the idea. Update on the engine situation here. I was trying to mock up the heater boxes and the muffler. Um, these were a little hard to get in. They, they don't really like each other, even though they're both stuck. These are original heater boxes that were powder coated. I bought them in California. Um, and this is a stock style muffler, but it's not VW. It's some other brand, which I heard mixed reviews on. And some people say you need to heat up this side and bang it up to make it fit. I don't have a torch. I don't really want to mess with that, with getting it on this end and that other end. But they're just off enough that it's annoying me and I can't get it in. I probably could if I kept trying or if I, I don't know, if, if I changed my tactic. But right now, what I think I will do is run the old J-tubes which I saved even though they look pretty rough and I'm going to dump them in this stuff rust remover that is septic safe and can be flush or whatever I, I didn't want to buy a bunch of acid Over, leave them for a few hours and see if it's an easier solution. I don't think it's too strong. <laughs> Maybe I need to brush it or something. So Maybe a good time to clean the inside too. I changed containers so I can soak them in a bit better. It's not too much. I'm not using a lot of it for now. Well, I used three quarters of the, of the little container, but um, it smells horrible. So I wanted to put them in something with a top in case, you know, the cat or something, because it stinks and I will put it outside with the top on.
Good morning. This video will be about the exhaust system assembly and heater boxes. I've been trying a few different methods with the stock style aftermarket muffler that would have fit with the stock heater boxes made by VW. So I bought these aftermarket ones that are also stock style. I've been talking about them a little bit. I painted this one because it was um, a bit scratched and the paint had some exposed metal and I wanted everything to be painted properly and I didn't paint both even though it would look better because this will help me see a few years down the line whether an additional coat of the paint I have is useful or not it will be a little experiment for comparison and hopefully this will be the last assembly video and if everything goes well today, next time I will do the first start video. So I'm looking forward. Gaskets were a nice fit because I bought the the other type. I had a new old stock kit that um, would have fit very well. And now these you can see are very loose. So this is not good either. I could totally have an exhaust leak in between. It's not focusing, but you can see how large the gap is. So I'm going to fill that up with a bit of these this stuff all around all underneath it before I put it on and then once I'm looking at it from the back from inside of this tube I will use the this tip to stuff it all the way and hopefully get a, a good seal so that's one thing I wanted to check before putting these in and now I need to see whether the the alignment will work because these things that move, when you have them in one position, you can get the tube into the heater box, but this one will be out of alignment, or this one, and then the heat risers are also an issue. In my old muffler, these heat riser holes were drilled through. These ones are tapped, so you have to have them perfectly aligned. If I have a lot of issues, what I can do is drill it out, make this hole bigger, and then put a pass-through bolt like I had before, and that will give me a bit more flexibility. But hopefully I don't need to do this just yet. Now I mocked it up just to show a little more of what I meant with the angle. You can see I have one nut holding this muffler here. If I have it in a line where the heater box connector will slide into this part then these fresh air exchangers you can see if i line it up like this are would never fit even if i had the angle right this could tilt a little more this way um it, it's too short so i will fill that up with Aluminum tape or something whenever I get it right Might even have to cut the bottom if, if it touches too much, but so far it won't even touch so I think it's fine and These heater boxes need to slide in a lot more Or rather the muffler needs to slide more towards the front towards the flywheel and Once that happens these holes need to align and I need to be able to thread the bolt into the bottom part with a gasket in there <laughs> and if that's not complicated enough this tin has to fit there as well so as you can see the more original parts you have the easier this whole process will be Okay, now I have it all aligned, these ends, these connectors between the heater box and the muffler are both in. 
at the same time, which took a bit of work. I have the donut gasket and its own backing plate behind it. And then the intake manifold is still loose, so I can move it up and down like this. My goal is to be able to move it up, slide the gasket, and then align the holes whenever the gasket gets a bit crushed. All the studs are have a nut in the end, except the bottom ones, and they're all the way out, so I'm trying to be very careful so that the flanges of the muffler and the heater box in the back don't hurt the threads in the studs. But if they do, I have a bunch of extra studs anyway, so. And then I'm also assuming that I can slide the tin that goes here in the end. I, I don't think I need to have it on right now. So that's everything. I will start slowly tightening, working the, the tin so that it doesn't get bit in between the, the head and the muffler and the gasket. On both sides, I have the same issue that I showed in other videos and hopefully these will slide in correctly aligned. We'll see. By the way, I'm using regular nuts instead of the copper ones because I learned that the copper ones self-destroy and you can't get them off. They come off with the stud and uh, for that reason, I'm only using these as a test fit and then I will replace them one by one with the copper ones after everything is in.
Now I made it back to this point where you can see I have the muffler going in pretty good. The heater box is going in pretty good on both sides. But the heat risers will only align on one side. This one I can tighten. But look at that hole. There's no way I could fit it in there. And this one is a lot better. You can still see it's kind of off. This one I thought I could force in, but it's not going in, even though it's only a slight angle. So I will take everything off and put the bolt in the thread here. I think there might be some paint in there, not letting me thread it. So I will clean the threads properly, bolt them in and out a couple times, maybe put some lubricant in them because they need to be really, really good for this process to work. Otherwise, there's no way they would go in. So as I suspected, hopefully I'm gonna get it in there. Yep, yeah, okay. This one. This one can bite pretty good, yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> so that's the good one. I'll get it all the way through. But this one has paint or something. Oh no, so the other way around. This is the good one. That's the one that gets stuck. All right, so all these nuts are now in. These are final eight of them in the muffler and the heater boxes. Well, no, seven of them because this is the other type I was talking about that gets stuck to the stud. So this one won't come off without bringing the stud with it. Unfortunately, I will be replacing that one with this little style. And hopefully it will be better, but I need to find my new studs before I do that. You got these two to align. I got the tin not to be bit in between the muffler and the head. This one is still giving me trouble. You can see how bad the alignment is. Um, it looks pretty good on video, but I threaded a bolt the other way. A longer one I had just to see if it would come through and it got destroyed I, I tried prying it you can see I hurt the material quite a bit I used this C clamp to try and push these together but there's just no way if I look straight up you can see it's barely misaligned but enough that if you try to push it through with a bolt this part, the non-threaded part, will hurt the thread of the bolt that's going into the um, muffler side of it. So what I'm going to try for now is just drop a thinner bolt in there. You can go all the way through and put a nut in there and call it a day. I know it's not perfect, but this is only the heat riser. So enough hot air should get through and if I don't have any leaks, I'll be happy. 
I just don't think it's worth destroying this more at this point. And I'll run it this way and if anything, if you know a better way to align it, let me know in the comments, but this will be the solution for now. This is coming along pretty good. I installed this hack job bolt in there. I think it looks great. It's not super aligned, but there will be enough preheat and I don't think there will be any leaks because I have that gasket in there. Uh, maybe I'll tighten it a bit more, but I was just going around doing all the tin screws. Everything nice and tight. The muffler's in as far as it will go. So I'm ready to install these clamps. These are not super aligned yet, but that's okay. If anything, I'll fill up that hole with tape, like I said before. These are all in. These are the permanent ones I'm going to use. I just did test fit the tin that goes here in the back and it was good. I tightened the throttle cable clamp to keep it from moving up and down. What else? Here I have a piece of tin that is broken. It wouldn't go all the way down anyway. There's all that space. So I'm just leaving it that way. This one's super firm. I had another broken hole there. So I used a big washer and a bolt instead of a screw. Uh, I don't know if that little gap there is an issue, but I don't like it. These are tight. So that gap is because of the same upper cylinder tin, that part. Um, what else? The heater boxes are in. I replaced the stud. It came off with a copper washer. I tightened the sled tins that gave me a lot of trouble. I had to use these longer bolts, but now they're all good. They're good down here too. And they have a fitment issue that I didn't talk about, but I can show it from up here. The tab for the for the heater box does not align with the hole in the slit tin. I don't know if you can see that I tried bending it and putting the bolt in or screw in diagonally. It's way off. Now I'm test fitting the tailpipe. I know it's a new old stock tailpipe. It has it still has this string with a, it had a little tag and on the other side it has some numbers. I don't think it's a part number and it probably needs to be painted but I know that exhaust parts get all messed up anyway so I will run it like this for now and I'm just showing the same issue I had underneath with the tabs of the heater boxes and the sled tins not aligning. Once again, look at this. This part is now complete. I put the copper um, gasket maker in the wire mesh donut gasket and installed these two piece clamps. I'm not super happy with them, but I heard they're better than the one piece flexible type. What I had to do is get a short 10 millimeter to get in on the other side here for the lower one. And it was really annoying. You can see this one got quite chewed up trying to tighten it because the angle here with the longer 10 millimeter is um, less than ideal. So on the other side, instead of going by the book, I rotated it 90 degrees. It doesn't matter if you have the threads up or down, in my opinion. But from what I learned, it's more convenient to do it this way than the way it's shown on the book, which is like this. And then another lesson learned from this part of the process is get these clamps in before finalizing everything else. Like just let them sit on the heater box or something because you can't get, they're too fat to get in afterwards. And 
I wanted to see how everything lined up and got this aluminum tape I was going to use to fix that angle difference. But now I've decided I want to use both the tape and the clamp. So I put the clamp in first and then the tape because I don't know if the, this will be held properly with only tape when rattling or whatever on the road. So I'm not sure I can get the clamps in after already tightening everything else. That's another big mistake. I may end up using just the tape. Hopefully I can get the clamp in, but just a heads up. All right, getting the clamp in there with the gap that I have, no matter how much I try to rotate this piece, it's impossible, but I was able to open it, uh, disassemble it completely and bend it. I don't want to bend it too much, but I guess that's plan B. It's less than ideal. I'm not sure I'll be able to put it back together. I'm, I'm, I think I will be, but at least I don't have to undo all of this. So we'll see if I can get this in like that. So this part ended up not being a problem at all. I don't even think I need the aluminum tape in there. The clamp is wide enough to correct the misalignment. So on to the next step, which will be trying to get this piece in there and align to the bottom part and get all these rubbers in. I assume that one goes like this. This one says base, air hose base. I need to go back to the diagram and make sure I have the right orientation for both of these and orientation and the location for both. This thing, um, here, I'll take this camera off so you can see. It has to go through the thing and the line there. So it's not super easy, but I need to figure it out too. At least that part is pretty good. I don't know, maybe some people will say it's horrible, but I think at least it fits. So it turns out the book has this piece with the short side pointing down, and then this bigger rubber with the dome side up. I guess it will cover the hose clamp in that groove. I'm not sure, but I'll try to do that. And then I have an extra piece, this one, that is not in the book. I, I will fit it there. I will try to see if it fits there because the diameter of it seems to match, seems to fit in there. Um, I don't I can't do it with one hand or maybe I can but it seems to go like that so I'll just stuff it in there and see if it works because it's not in the book and it says um, muffler to fresh air so extra gasket there and hopefully I can line it all up I loosened up this one a little bit to give me some play here and I will use some of that high temperature paint on this scratched up part. The other thing I noticed is this considerable dent. I don't think I did this. <laughs> so, I, and I also don't remember, I'll have to check the pictures, but I don't know why it's dented so bad. Uh, poor quality or is it design? The side is not as deep. Maybe I pushed on it too hard and I'm very strong, but Seems weird. I got the middle piece in down here with the extra gasket I had. Pulled out the end pieces that were blocking the shroud here. And what I'm about to do is 
just eyeball this distance. There's about one inch down there to the top, so I will cut it somewhere around here. Th these are able to stretch a bit, so, and I can also bend them up or down to compensate for any differences. So I don't think I need to be extremely precise. And once I'm done with that, I will do everything I did on the other side. I don't think I need to record it. This will have one clamp here, another clamp underneath. And I need to remember the dome gasket. And then I'll be pretty much done with the build. Put the old carburetor here on top. And the tailpipe, I think I don't have... Oh, <laughs> um, distributor cables. That's it. I think I'm very, very close to making a video um, the Will It Run video is coming out soon. Yeah, so this pulse clamp should be sitting, I believe should be sitting under the tin because there won't be enough material for it to grab up here. Or maybe, maybe it's fine, but I think I'd, I will be better off if I remove this piece, put the pulse clamp in and then put it back and just tighten it from underneath like this. <clears throat> Otherwise, it barely fits in there, so. I don't know if you can see that, but it's getting a bit in there. And then this side has no space for it because the tin is touching the middle piece. So if everything could just move one more millimeter towards the front, it would fit. Just have to keep wrestling this. Bad idea, don't push on it. <laughs> Should 
shaved off the little piece that was getting stuck. Just a bit more. Drop the hose clamp and I'll try again. So I think I need to cut the tin here a tiny bit. You can see the other side has a bunch of space, but this one I had the hose hitting it and I would like it to go through as far down as I can. That's why I left it a bit long, but it's not getting through. Or maybe I can pry the tin and then push the hose. I don't know if the tin coming back then will hurt it. I already hurt it here, trying to push it with the screwdriver. So I'll be more careful. Here you can see a bit more detail of what I'm trying to explain. The tin is rubbing on, the, on this middle piece. I can't change that angle anymore. Um, and it looks like this hole was cut by somebody else on the tin. So it, might be a problem with the tin itself and not with the aftermarket stuff because the the hole is moved a little um, off center so i already painted this i would hate to but i need that much gap over here so you can see this much but on this segment and that would help this get through all right, here's my disgusting job, ruining the paint and moving the hole a little more. Now you can see I have the gap I needed. Hopefully that's enough. I should probably clean this with the Dremel or something and then repaint it, but I want to be done. So that's a, another thing to the list of problems for my future self and this is what I was trying to say about the hole being moved. Either that or this, you know, same thing. Um, al alignment issues with everything. But whenever I do this proper properly, I would uh, re-weld it, complete that part, and then clean this side out. So now, fitment test one more time. Here's the final product. I was able to get the clamp on the underside like I wanted. This extra gasket ended up sliding over the muffler element, but it's still doing something there. This one was great to compensate for the alignment issues in the hole, except for a little space there that if I really wanted, I could tape up with aluminum tape I will probably do that. I also have a, a different high temperature tape I could slide in there. I have that giant hole there that I need to do something about anyway. I'm probably missing a tin or um, fitment um, compatibility issues with this piece. I don't know if it's another car or what. Maybe somebody used the full flow return this way. I don't know. And the only easy part was the top one. Super sturdy, looks nice. I'll do the other side. And I think I'll be ready today. Wow, I really thought I was in a good spot here, but the other side is insanely worse. If you look at it from back to front, there's a third of the tube that it is out of place. It looks the same from this side. But, well, this is, this is ridiculous. Huh. I don't even know what I'm going to do with this one. This part is touching the heat riser, so I can't push it back anymore. I don't know. That's how, that's how I would put it if I was only thinking about this part. I would put it right there. 
then look at this. <sighs> this is another unexpected fitment issue that others might find. This middle piece on the left side fit perfectly. I even had to hammer it down and it was, I had to take it back out at one point and it was hard to get it back out. I needed pliers and um, pulled it out pretty hard. This one barely sits in there. It's easy to get it out. Well, not easy because it touches the tin on top, but easy to separate this piece from this one. You see how there's a lot of play. So I think I will put it upside down the way I have it right now so that it can't fall out because the hose has plenty of space there for the clamp. And if the hose comes out, I can always put it back. But if this thing falls in there, and I don't know, it might be harder to, to see it or to put it back. So I think I will put it upside down as a temporary solution. Now I'm showing it the correct way up to show what I mean. That's it without anything. It easily goes up and down. Um, there's no tight fit like the other one. It, uh, if it popped out and sat like this, maybe I wouldn't notice. Or even there, or if a mouse got in or something, I feel like I wouldn't see it. But if I have the long way in, it's harder for it to come all that way out. Right side is now done. A uh, couple of observations. This part still needs to have a piece of hose and it's hose clamp, but it's crushing the fresh air hose. So uh, another fitment issue to consider. This is all VW, you can see there. So, I don't know. I, I can't see a way where this hose would be any thinner. So I did something wrong there. And then for these clamps, instead of buying the ones that are supposed to go in there, I would try to find something that is not just thicker. I would go at least two, even two and a half inches thick. But then if possible, get one with a longer screw that gives you some extra flexibility to to um, reach the other side when it's open and then um, clamp everything down. Because what you end up doing is forcing it in by screwing the clamp. And if you don't, if you can't align the screw correctly, it gets very, very difficult and it takes a while. So that's as good as I can get it bottom side is much better than the left side perfect fitment and I even have a small piece left for this other one that goes to the air cleaner I don't know if it's long enough I was going to buy another one anyway so if it if it's long enough great if it's not then it doesn't matter but um, it connects to this stove pipe too that I need to install now I will do the tailpipe and wrap it up. Okay. This is new old stock. Goes here. Original one, the new one. And some hardware.
kit only came with three of these washers. I thought I needed four for these. And this other type with the, I don't know what that's called, but uh, two of those. And a small one of those. So I will see if these fit there. Yep. I should be able to fit a wrench in there somehow. Or So I just won't use the washer on one side and use it on the other. This has to be super tight, otherwise it can just slide right out, I guess. Is there a better way to do this? I don't know. There's a very big mismatch here. So the gap I have is very small. So I'll need a very uh, narrow bolt to go in there instead of whatever the kit has. Unless I can bend this tab more, but I already tried. So I'm just test fitting everything.
Oh shit. Don't forget this.
The bolts in the kit are too short for the original clamp. I'm guessing it's because it's thicker. This material is significantly thinner. So whenever you clamp it down, like you barely have enough with the thin material. So I need longer bolts, like the old ones. Uh, oh, I guess they're pretty much the same. No, I'll take this one out and compare. So what kind of savings can a company get by taking five threads out of a bolt? I will show this properly because there's a tiny hole. There's no way I could put this wrong because it only goes that way. Now I can show the alignment issue I was talking about. And this has a little groove, so you can't put it wrong. There's only one way in. So there's a very slight angle downwards and I will just put some copper in there just in case but that's it that's the whole muffler setup hopefully next week I will post the first start video I went under the bus for a moment there to replace the asbestos cuff that goes instead of these rubber ones so the equivalent of this but on the other side would be right here and it has a white piece of factory asbestos that I didn't want luckily it wasn't there so what I did instead was check the rear brake hoses and I found out these are from 2009, 0709, and 2010, 0610. So I'm glad I ended up dealing with this. I'm very happy I did it, and I'm also very happy I didn't have to deal with any asbestos. So this was a much easier job, even though the right side one is impossible, but um, great to check it while I was on, already there. I also want to show this part of the process because I didn't find any information anywhere on how to do this. Basically the heater box kit comes with a bunch of parts. For example this one that you don't need. I have no idea what this is. I have never seen this type of clamp and then a little tiny one that broke, but I assume it goes with this one because of the diameter. Uh, spare bolt and two nuts that I think um, go in those studs here with the gaskets one and one. They're too big for these bolts. And then these bolts don't have nuts, so I think this one is a spare for that one. This one goes with the barrel nut where you clamp the cable and the barrel nut goes here like that um, okay i'll show the other one but it goes in there the cable comes down this way and then this has to pivot on the heater box and then you have a spring that i also didn't need now let me show this other side that I already installed. You can see that strange washer, whatever you call this, clamp. Fits very, very tightly on the stud. So I guess it holds the lever from pulling out. 
Um, this groove goes on the top, so the barrel nut goes in there and the cable pulls this way. Goes like that and you pull. And mine has a return spring already, so I won't use that spring that came with the kit. And if I was going to use it, I would put it either in that little hole or down here, but I would need something to mount it to right there. So maybe a different type of tin comes with something, or you can, I don't know, JB Weld would be strong enough, or drill there and put a little washer or something to hold it. But mine comes back on its own, so. That's it, and there's the one that I broke on the other one. You can see its shape. This is a little pin with a groove, and you force that clip in there, whatever it's called, and it will sit on a little groove and prevent it from falling out. I don't know why they don't just use a bolt with a self-locking nut or something, but this is an interesting way to um, send this kit.